intro. Persona feel is so relaxing and relieving and satisfying, maybe a little satisfying to let go of um, the desire to control. Yeah, that's not always super lovely, but you know. That's what strategy's about, baby. <laughs> so. The globally connected component known structurally as the internet and virtually as the World Wide Web has illuminated humanity's need for interdependence. With the formation of these newfound desires, a creeping cynicism has infiltrated the minds of a discreet set of technocratic leaders. These desires are aimed at the control, deception, and manipulation of the new networked public sphere. Zineb Tufeki, author of Twitter and Tear Gas, skillfully illustrates the precise mechanisms and information routes that power seekers use. Subtle leverage points are simultaneously handcrafted, attaining the unique ability to disrupt the paradigm of reality itself. What differences lie between this new virtual networked public sphere and the physical ones built with brick and mortar? What happens when the average citizen is more interested in their Facebook feed than the screams of the woman in the apartment below? Questions like these get answered in Tufaki's book through the lens of reciprocal feedback between the online realm and the physical protests social movements use to leverage attention in changing sentiment. A stark difference arises when early social movements in America are cited for comparison. When network formation could not rely on technology, the amount of effort is correlated to willingness and the risk assessment by the government is much higher than current slacktivism. That is, thanks to the blurred lines of physical and virtual, quote, we can act in community with more unanimity than our government and we created our leaderless society last night. Email Durkheim. Established governing systems designed by the people that govern citizens of a country are quite good at observing social sentiment on a variety of issues. So are computers and applied mathematicians. Various countries have different ways of structurally organizing their observation efforts, but they all have a tighter grip on information flow than any one citizen or corporation does in the rivers. The public sphere was dominated by mass media outlets controlled by the government and Egyptians were in the early stages of experimenting with the use of the internet for sharing political information to Faki. And then Google, Facebook, Twitter, and a few other tech giants became responsible for the structure involved in social network formation and functionality. An algorithmically dictated public sphere 
How does one constrain the mathematical cacophony of letters and symbols that has outfoxed the human condition? Play the game? Quote, for social movements, an algorithm can be a strong tailwind or a substantial obstacle. Algorithms can also shape the social movement tactics as a movement's content producers adapt or transform their messages to be more algorithm friendly to Fecky. In the case of geo-government, a worldwide government, governments around the world, <laughs> ignore ethical notions of privacy and common decency in exchange for an edge in regaining citizen control. That's exactly what governments across the world have done in response to scarcity in their control. Quote, social media's business model financed by ads paid out based on number of page views makes it not just possible, but even financially lucrative to spread misinformation propaganda, or distorted partisan content that can go viral in algorithmically entrenched echo chambers. Tufeki. Attention scarcity. Keep in mind, <laughs> that attention, not information per se, is the most crucial resource for a social movement. Tufeki. One path, many perspectives. One small perturbation. That's all a system needs to find itself in a completely different cycle. Maybe even one void of stability. With the advent of deliberate mis- and disinformation, governments have redesigned what it means to be in control. Disseminating a flood of information, plausible, yet completely fictional into the network public sphere, thus attaching to the algorithm as attentively orienting. Quote, people were scared that these stories might be true, confused about what to believe, and unsure about how to deal with this flood of negative stories, Tufeki. In practice, it shifted focus. The, quote, virtual social network <laughs> type of protest coalitions that form in response to the cry of social outreach and outrage are built in the networked public sphere. Remember, they are bounded by the rules dictated from the technocratic elite. Once a government found that to censor a potential networked protest, all one needed to do was muddle the waters of legitimacy. Governments produce themselves the actual illegitimacy of the protest ability to fulfill its purpose. That is, governments use information dissemination as a weapon in opposing meaningful, lasting rule changes. The willingness to poison the well, <laughs> to make sure the poison is doing what it's intended to do. There are recognized variables that leverage paradigm oscillations, 
in a reasoned democracy, the people choose the transition through states. As stated above, reason, however, is reducible to the sum of its parts. Social signaling, bluffs, and neurotic fanatics spell out the ingredients necessary to engage with definitive social change, policy reform, and global norm acceptance. These elements, when spilled out of movements, will incite democratic run governments to engage the organized complexity that governments themselves have exponentially generated through fake news propagation is staggering. Regardless of the noise, network science aids in finding the leaders of movements and detracting from their attempted bids at attentive moves. But how? Many quantitative measures exist for describing the influence of a node on a network. How does a user with 1 million followers on Twitter amass such a component size? Is there a threshold to component size becoming saturated? That is, is there a point where the size of the component is so dense that information can't pass through it. What about bandwidth capacity? How fast can information transfer through the network? Is it possible to speed up information transmission to overcome saturation and clarify one's message one gets one set of eyes, and multitasking is a myth. Tufeki speaks of attention as a key factor in social contagion. Observing the structural makeup of general affiliation networks, one can infer homophily dynamics. Your cliques at school are built of people who like each other. Your cliques at work are built of people who are alike each other. Group behaviors provide a mechanism to broaden the social spread of social contagion. Most people are inundated by several forms of social contagion. Their attention is running on overload. How does one organize a multiple social contagion spread on consolidated network types? different platforms? How do we rein it in? How do we orient? With cohesive social groups, one entity is not responsible for the diffusion or deciphering of information. Members do this action simultaneously. Social movements have one primary challenge, routing information through a focal point. Modern uprisings have been mindful of this, having toppled long-standing dictatorships. My questions probe information transmission and salient interdependency between members of a community. How do we engage with the networked public sphere while preserving autonomy and building anti-fragility? We, as individuals, are no longer able to remain insular in bubbles. How then do we orient towards radical honesty with compassionate skillfulness? How do we filter our attention towards useful information? The stated as a mathematical hypothesis as attention towards information, as a function of density increases, when attentional surprise happens, group cohesion must increase. The density function is the prevalence to which contagion spreads on a network dictated by relationships. 
Attentional surprise is one's own ability to apply pattern recognition to one's attentional successes and notice new pathways emerge. Group cohesion is defined by the measurement of purposeful effort towards a common goal. Having resolved the question on what is attention, in what way can one give attention to all the information swirling rather chaotically on top of this whimsical web? They cannot even begin to. Attention ascertains a framework in which psychologists have possibly decided what plays on the liminal plane of perception is, that is, what is therefore our brain to masticate on, feel through, think through, cognate on. <laughs> Meaning we as creatures of belonging and mastery have to put autonomy to get our attention where we will. In fact, evolution has devised mental structures known as heuristics to aid guiding us in this process of choice. The problem with influence. Currently, network researchers spend exorbitant amount of energy seeking to understand influence with the realm of social networks. Any web of interdependent social spheres has latent properties that give rise to emergence referred to as network effects. It is unclear the cause of this diffusion of influence or how these cascades initialize. There are some very promising theories of social influence and adoption within networks and frameworks of idealist visions of perfection. No memory of the consistent forgetful paradise. As a society scientist myself, there is a personal understanding of the weight on behavior and belief groups have on individuals. The, the further to that desire is the yearning to know how the collective influences individuals. Does one have a choice in being influenced? How tight do teams have to be to bubble so hard they open vivid lines of connection? Not a question. Does network structure, such as small percolating clusters, make a big difference in adoption rates? How do groups of people collectively spread memes and norms? Specifically, is it possible to understand what diffuses most readily on network types of network platforms? Which platforms do these percolating clusters of people spread information most clearly. Built on the relationship of patterning of concurrency and homophily, networks form around relationships. Said partnerings have a formation, concurrency, and disillusion metric that also shape how the network forms around this relationship dance. This notion of interdependency also forms the network's consolidation of typecast characteristics for certain pockets of the network, also known as a percolating cluster. They go on to form larger components all built by relationships at the micro. These mesoscale formations can then form the component network of fluid-like flow that is seen topologically at the highest view of the overall network structure. 
okay now that our structural definitions are painted in your mind palace, let's infer the dynamical underpinnings of society. Micro building the macro, is it also true that these macro structures influence the micro? One who understands how connected we as humans really are might stop to consider that reaching turbulent off the beaten path nodes is not as easy as it would appear. Hence, pockets of society form and thrive, physical structures that reaffirm they only hear their own echo of information reverberation. Network effect. Information exchange dictates the rise of network effects. Once one piece of information attains enough attention, it dominates and redirects all viewership to itself being an indirect cause of network formation and orientation. By means of structureless dynamics within consolidated groups, I call this the Streisand effect, and it reverses this equation, and it makes a more accurate prediction, and it gives an outpost, and it gives back time, and it offers outcomes from a place that I believe is love. I select to engage in effortless wisdom in prescription, calculated by those in power as the new age, censorship, and control. We now have riots and uprisings. By now, I think I've illustrated how important it is to be actively aware of which information one chooses to consume and how relationships will influence which information you choose to adopt. But when do we actually act on the information? How do we allow for new information to change our beliefs and guide our actions? When does information become a story that we tell ourselves that forces us to drive our plot to a point, a place, a meaningful idea, a letting go, maybe a surrender? How I espouse and act without this stupid letting go of action stuff is in the pause. Why do you need to like make it so conceited and driven by me and I? And like coming from somebody else, a, another you, I can't be a part of that process. You have to let that happen. That makes more sense than pushing inward to let go. Effort into, effortful, intuitive, sensory, kind of brave type stuff to live in that pause and to be unsure. It's a low, yeah. That type of split knowing that I'm sure is a way for the life in the night and the frozen, out of sight, hand falling through particles. And now I know this just gets illicit, 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 illicit.